Hi everyone. First of all, thanks uh, for to everyone for joining us today. We are all a part of the Indus cabinet here at Fuqua, and today we're here to talk everything Fuqua and how Indus is involved with this Fuqua community. Uh, we're here to answer any of your questions, so feel free to send us your questions as and when you have them. Uh, in the meantime, we can quickly start off with the introductions. So I'm Abhijit Sahagal. I am originally from Lucknow, UP, uh, but my father was in the army, so I've moved around a lot in India across eight or nine different states. Um, before come, I did my engineering in Bangalore and um, started off working with ZS Associates, which is into healthcare consulting. Worked with them in their India offices for about two years, post which I permanently transferred to the Philly office here in the United States. Um, uh, at Fuqua, I've been involved with obviously Indus, uh, the consulting club, the tech club. And over the summer, I interned with Deloitte in their strategy and operations consulting arm um, and had a great summer. Cool. Uh, yeah. Hi, all. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Kedar and I'm a co-president of the Indus club uh, along with Ayush. So quick background about myself. I grew up in Goa and moved to Mumbai for my undergrad. I'm a chartered accountant by education. Post-graduation, I worked with PwC in the due diligence team. Then I moved to KPMG in their SNO consulting team. And uh, this summer, I interned at a tech startup based out of Florida. Uh, and yeah, after Fuqua, I'll, I'll, I'm just still thinking about uh, multiple options, uh, what job to take, so yeah. That's... Hi everyone, my name is Aditi. I was born and brought up in Haryana, but after that moved to Ahmedabad. Um, I did engineering from IIT Kharagpur and post that I worked with Deutsche Bank as an investment banker, then moved to a private equity firm called Madison India Capital in Delhi, worked there. Um, and yeah, uh, here at Fuqua, I am a coal fellow and I'm also involved with the uh, uh, tech club um, and uh, this summer I interned with Dell Technologies as a product manager. This is a complete transition from where I was working, but it was a very nice experience for me. Uh, and lastly, um, hi guys, my name is Ayush. Um, I'm also the co-president of uh, of the Indus Club. Um, I before coming to Fuqua, um, I um, I worked in two different companies. First in financial services, followed by consulting. Um, I interned um, also at Dell uh, in product management. Um, again, a great experience. And um, and otherwise, I'm I'm from Jaipur in India, um, and have uh, worked across uh, cities in India, and have also um, sort of lived here in the United States um, you know, uh, for a brief period in my childhood. Um, with that, we can get started. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so guys, again, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions that you have. We will take them as we see them. But in the meantime, we can start off uh, talking a bit about the club. So what's the purpose of our club? Uh, when I think of it, it's like, I think of it as two broad buckets. So like career focus as well as the social focus. But maybe yeah, you guys can kick us off with. Uh, yeah, let me talk about the career part first. So firstly, Indus is a club which represents South Asian countries mm -hmm. at Fuqua. Yep. And from the career perspective, like the second year students who've gone through the recruitment process in the first year, our main objective is to assist the first year students through their career process. So what we do is we have like a Indus buddy program where we match each first year student with a second year student, depending on their prior experience and what they want to do post Fuqua. And uh, it's basically just helping out the first year students throughout the recruitment process, which might include uh, resume reviews or cover letter reviewing, conducting mock interviews, casing practices. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, about the career side of it. And uh, maybe Aish can tell you a bit more about the social part as well. Sure. Um, so social is also a big part of, uh, you know, of, um, of the community here. We, uh, we give a lot of focus on not only um, a lot of mingling between first year and second year students as part of the two year MBA program, but also making sure that um, you know that the cultural transition of people coming from outside the U.S. to you know a new cultural environment, um, you know that so that that transition smooth. We want to make sure that everybody feels at home, um, not only within uh, you know say people from the same country, but also uh, people you know just just making 
you know, fresh relationships, value relationships outside of, uh, outside of you know, people from their home country. So we want to make sure that people um, you know, have a good holistic personal as well as professional experience um, here, in, uh, you know, here at Fuqua um, based on their you know, previous experience. And um, yeah, and we want to make sure that uh, people can call this place uh, you know, uh, a new home uh, you know, away from home. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Ayush, especially around the part where how uh, there are so many international students who've come here and who are transitioning to life at Fuqua and just life in the United States. And I, it's, I think, very important for us to have these sessions early on once they as soon as they move here to make them feel at home, g give them a, a cultural background of how this place runs and just how to like bring their best self to the Fuqua community in general. Um, maybe we can talk about some of the club engagement activities uh, with Inder, some of the initiatives that we've taken um, on how, again, we uh, inculcate all the Fuqua, the Indus first year folks into the Fuqua community. So, Sure, I can, I can start off with that. Um, mm -hmm. So we have, we have a bunch of um, like activities that we, activities and, and like, um, and um, um, broader like events that we do um, to not only represent, um, you know, our home cultures here at Fuqua, um, but also for, you know, for us to, to experience that here, um, you know, away from home. For example, we recently had the Diwali party. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right, um, people uh, all over the world love Indian food. Um, like, of course, we do as well. And then we had, uh, you know, all people from all over kind of the world, uh, you know, all, all representing their, their own countries at the Diwali party, um, you know, having a good time. We, we talked about our cultures. Uh, we shared um, what Diwali is all about. Um, so that was like a good experience, um, not only for them, but also for us. Um, quick tip, if you're coming to Fuqua soon, um, or if you plan to, um, don't forget your uh, your traditional clothes because don't feel like you have to leave all your traditional mm -hmm. clothes back at home um, because you you know, you know might you might they might come in handy here as well. Probably get one more pair so that you can give that, uh, so that your classmates who are not from India can borrow them and yeah. wear that to the Diwali party. So that's another <laughs> pro tip. So the Diwali party is actually an Indus initiative with not just integrates uh, people within Indus, but also the entire Fuqua community. So we hosted a party for around 300 uh, students and mm -hmm. everyone, like not just Indians, but entire, I think all the student first year, second years, people showed up and it was a big pain planning the the party. <laughs> I remember the one week before that was really harrowing, but the party was really great. And yeah, we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, I think we also host like uh, mixers with the first year students. So initially in September, when the first year students just came on campus, we had like an informal mixer just to help them get to know the second year students and build that comfort level with the second years. Uh, we're also having a party this Saturday. I think we're talking about parties a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having a party this Saturday. Um, it's a second year only party uh, because we haven't, like our class hasn't partied like since, since a really long time. We yeah. also do like fireside chat with oh, yeah. uh, Indus alumni who has recently graduated so that uh, Indus people can get an idea of what to expect, how to prepare, mm -hmm. what they are looking for. So that's also helps you in career taking making career decisions and i think another initiative that we recently started uh, in terms of uh, helping first years ramp up to their uh, career recruiting stuff was uh, just assigning a few first years to um, a few for a cohort of first years to each second year so that they can help them out not just with their uh, resume and cover letter review but also help them out with their behavioral component of the interview that happens so that's another thing apart from just the parties that we do have here mm -hmm. um so i do see that we have a few questions coming in but we can first just quickly give our reasons on why we chose to attend fuqua so kedar why don't you kick us off and then just go yeah somewhere. uh so I've read a lot about Team Fuqua through Poets and Cons and other blogs. But when I actually reached out to students or through uh, alums of different business schools, I found the response from Fuqua alums to be really great. And that's when I thought like, if this is a response when I'm just a prospective student, what would the response be when I'm actually a part of the Fuqua network? And that's something which got me here. and. Uh, Durham was a big sell for me as well. I wanted to be in a college town. I didn't want to be in a big city. And you can actually feel that in Durham. I think yeah. it's, it's just about Duke. Like everywhere you go, you see people wearing Duke sweatshirts and 
Durham is a great place to live for two years, not not after business school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with Kedar. Those were two main reason, but one more reason why I attended Pupa was its leadership. So they have this pool uh, fellow thing, and I was really really keen on getting into that because I really wanted to develop my leadership skills. And I saw like how Cole is helping Pupa uh, and as well as students to develop those leadership skills. So I'm glad that I could become part of it and now can see it by myself how it is helping me shape my leadership qualities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, all the above. Um, again, my I had personal and professional reasons to come to Fuqua, uh, including uh, you know Duke is big on basketball. I'm a, I'm a huge basketball fan. Um, you know, I wanted to get involved there as well at Fuqua. Um, and other than that, like it's I I also went to an undergrad. Um, I went to Bits in India. Um, and that was also like a very small college town. Um, I wanted this. I wanted a similar experience for my for my post grad because after that, um, again, it's going to be living in cities, uh, you know, for the rest of our, for the rest for the rest of our lives. So I wanted to make sure that I have uh, that sort of close knit community, um, um, you know, during my experience during my MBA, and that's something I found at Fuqua to be mm-hmm. really um, not only to be not only rewarding professionally, but uh, but also personally, right? Um, it's not it's not a place you want to call. Um, you, 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 you might have read on the website that the experience is transformational. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that, that my experience here is not transactional and it's actually transformational from a personal as well as professional perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I think um, having a healthcare background and wanting to continue that path post Fuqua, I was very attracted to the HSM, that's the Health Sector Management Program. And, so, and that's one of the best in the country with professors like David Ridley and Peter Ubel who have a huge say in this industry in general. And being taught by this, these professors has been amazing. I think personally, I I think one you it talks about Team Fuqua a lot, and it's hard to put that into words. But when I did come here for an interview, I felt that like the whole school was, I felt was being run by students. Like my interview was being conducted by a second year. I think that whole experience was it's just tangible on the campus once you're here. What Team Fuqua is all about. Um, do you want to, yeah, let's just yeah, start let's with move on questions. to the questions. Uh, we've got a few. Uh, so first one is, is it required to seek help from consultants for application writing? Uh, short answer, no, it's not required. Yeah. Um, I did not hire a consultant. Um, I did con- contemplate on it, though. Um, um, there are a lot of like different uh, reasons why people may or may not uh, hire a consultant, but I don't know if you guys... I would say it's not required, but it is important to get the perspective of someone who's been through a business school, who's been through this process, because if you show it to someone who's just been in India, they haven't really, they don't really like know the entire process a student goes through. Uh, So I would advise if you have a friend or anyone who's actually done their MBA in the US, get your essays reviewed uh, by them. That that would be of utmost importance. Yeah, like I made my consultants... um, um, the the Fuqua people, um, so I had a lot of uh, people from from undergrad as well as just people I could you know they connected me to, so um, it was like free consulting services. Yeah. That way. <laughs> uh, so Fuqua is really great in just helping out there. So yeah. Yeah. cool. Yeah, I I do agree with Ayush and Kedar there. It's just uh, it, it's not important hiring a consultant and who can actually help you out with this. It's just getting your applications proofread by people who you trust or who are your mentors. It might be within your firm, it might be within your family, and just make sure that your application is crisp and is genuine more than anything, uh, where you're expressing your interest for Fuqua and why you want to come here. I did hire a consultant, but I felt like more than that, my friends really helped me Mm -hmm. with the review because they knew my story better. They knew how I should be portraying it. So I felt like consultant was there just for the sake, but my friends were the best resources. Uh, so next question is, how is the academic experience at Fuqua different from that of other B schools? I don't know. I haven't been to other B schools. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, like, we can talk about how is the academic experience at Fuqua. Yeah. Uh, let me give them a perspective on that. Uh, I think it's a great balance of the... So first of all, uh, full disclosure, this was the first time I was uh, exposed to an academic setting within the United States. So I I loved it because it was more practical based as, a pro, as opposed to what we're used to studying in India where it's very theoretical. Uh, but having said that, it's a really good balance of cases, actual real life cases that have uh, happened 
uh, in the past with companies, along with the professor bringing his research material into class where he's talking about, so, uh, like we had this one class called consumer behavior, oh, yeah. where the professor was giving us snippets from his ongoing research, which was not even published. So I think I, for me, it's been great so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been really great. And plus, I really like the how they focus on team. Yeah. So you are in first year, you are assigned a random team, uh, which in which has domestic as well as international students and all are from different backgrounds. So working together with them was really a very different experience. And this is something I learned a lot from my team, like hearing from their opinion, how to uh, deal with different situations. So not just like academic setting, but within like team Fuqua setting that I saw within my team. Yeah, um, maybe another letter note can be, um, um, like ACADs, ACADs are intense um, and you have to balance that along with other, other things at Fuqua. Um, what I've heard from some people from other business schools is that um, like some other top business schools are even more, uh, uh, I would say, uh, like more academic driven, um, but at the same time, they might not give so much uh, importance to say your GPA. Um, and, you know, that's something which, uh, you know, Fuqua I think has a good balance of. Yeah. We, yeah. we, do, we do have uh, like great disclosure uh, mm -hmm. at Fuqua, um, but it's not like it's gonna interfere with, um, you know, some of your other priorities that you may have. Yeah be it recruiting or other um, stuff that you want to do. And I think that's where the whole team Fuqua aspects comes in. Like yeah. there were so many times last year when I had other commitments where I was prioritizing maybe recruiting activities more than the academics. But then my C lead or yeah. my first year team that yeah. we're, we're assigned like teams of five to six folks from different parts of the world who work together throughout uh, their life at Fuqua. And so they stepped in and they really like took ownership of those tasks yeah. and like and I did the same once they were prioritizing other stuff so yeah. I think even the professors are pretty understanding that yep. if you're going yes. through a recruiting process uh, they understand what it's like they understand that you want to focus on recruiting so they are considerate of the fact that you would be spending a lot of your time on recruiting yep. yeah sorry I know we uh, just another point before that um there's a lot of in terms of academic experience there's also a lot of experiential experiential learning programs here at Fuqua, which try and bridge the the gap between academics and the real world. Um, you know, more information can be available on the website. We're happy to answer more questions if you have it there. But like uh, stuff like uh, there's something called the Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum mm -hmm. um, program for entrepreneurs. Um, men, you know, uh, a lot of uh, mentored. Uh, mentored study and Fuqua uh, on board. Fuqua on board. Like there's there's a bunch yeah. of. Uh, uh, stuff out there which which you can actually work with say a company or you know um or a private research firm um along with your academics um that would connect the bridge between mm -hmm. schools so i think that brings me to my next question mm -hmm. i would like to combine two questions that are over here first one is what are the other clubs that really helped enhance your fuqua mb experience and can each one of you talk about your contribution to fuqua outside the class so let me quickly start by just giving one example, mm -hmm. uh, not about clubs, but about some initiative which I'm doing, like um, I used to just mention, there is a mentored study program over here at Fuqua, which in essentially lets you work. It's like a second internship. So it lets you, it pairs you with a company and it lets you work with them for whatever role that you might want to work in. So I realized that I wanted to get some experience in marketing because I come traditionally from a finance background. So I'm currently working with a tech startup which is based out of the Bay Area. It, it deals in like AI softwares for uh, artificial intelligence softwares for cameras and drones. And I'm working in, the, in their product marketing function. So it's been a great experience because I'm getting to work actually with a company and in a different role than what mm -hmm. I have my experience in. So that's been a really great experience for me. It's not really related to clubs, but that's something which I want to talk about. Yeah, so for me, like since I was changing industry, it was very important to get myself involved and show my passion towards the industry I wanted to go. So I really wanted to enter into the tech industry. So there are like tech club, which really helps you prepare for the tech industry, like product casing or strategy casing, finance casing, no matter which role you are applying in tech. Also, uh, as Ayush mentioned about FCCP, Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, I did a digital transformation strategy project uh, for a company in Colombia, which really helped me get exposure in the tech and could portray that uh, 
to my uh, to prospective companies like how and why i'm interested in this field mm -hmm. apart from that like there are so many different clubs it really depends on what you want to do we have consulting tech club general management marketing um fintech fintech yeah, yeah there's so many like it really depends on what you want to make out of your experience at pupa yeah and um like um these were some of the professional clubs there's a lot of um like non professional clubs as well um indus is one of the um sort of non professional diversity clubs that we have here at pupa um and other than that like even you can even be a part of um clubs outside of pupa and part of duke university Mm -hmm. um like for example, i was i was a part of the uh the do basketball um operations team uh last year so that was also uh, something that that people take up um here at pequa yeah i i think apart from all the things that have already been mentioned i was a part of the um, i am the I'm a, a part of the arts club here cuz i like playing the guitar in my free time so we we meet once a week and we just jam here in school which is not just a good stress reliever but i think it's just just good overall development meeting your uh, classmates and just catching up yeah just one point which is not related to this question but the previous question you can also take classes uh, in the bigger duke yeah. Oh, i'm yeah. taking mm, classes in pratt engineering school for product management so there are many different classes so depending on your interest you can choose even there are music classes which you can take in different schools so. yep So let's move on to some serious stuff now. Oh. I like to combine two questions. What according to you is the main limitation or challenge that Indians face in getting their dream job or pursue their goals in US post MBA? And a related question to this is what industries and companies are truly open to hiring and sponsoring wait this is more and sponsoring visas for internationals especially Indian students? so one is a challenge and the companies which are open for hiring yeah. uh, first of all i don't think there's a distinction between international students and indians yeah. Yeah. i think it yeah. it's it's the, it's very binary you i they they're either sponsoring a visa for any international or they're not it there so there's no distinction there but yeah i'll get that you guys get started yeah i think the biggest challenge is uh sponsor yeah like, what so. do you need in the newspapers yeah. what's happening <laughs> yeah. in the us uh So I would say yes the companies um, are shying away from hiring international students that is a concern um, like i uh, think at fuqua a lot of general management companies have closed not just at fuqua but i think it must be happening across the yeah, us yeah it is yeah it's it is happening across the us a lot of general management companies or uh, fmcg companies are closing doors for international students they're not really willing to sponsor so that is a uh, biggest challenge investment banking is also another area where they're slowly closing down doors for international students uh given that or said that the two main industries which are really opening their arms for international students one is consulting yep. and second one is tech okay. tech is like the biggest savior out here maybe you guys could talk more about yeah just to give you some example last year at dell we were eight people and of those all international Uh, all yeah, internationals all, all wow internationals, okay yes uh, so amazon is a big big on hiring internationals uh, last year and yeah. this year as well from what i know so yeah. yeah so and one thing um you know um apart from like like we're we're we're, we're trying to be as as transparent as possible um but having having said um what we're saying um i believe that especially when you think about your dream companies um more often than not your dream company would be sponsoring um yeah. at least in these two industries consulting and technology um if you have a very specific niche that you want to go into i would wear a more practical hat before uh you know before uh, saying that hey i want to do um a very you know a very niche sort of uh, you know take on a very niche career in a very small company um i would want to you know wear a more practical hat there so it depends on what your dream company is and what your dream industry is mm -hmm. and if i look at the class like our class of uh, indus students uh, we've got like really good placements oh, yeah. with really good companies like in consulting we got mckinsey bcg pwc deloitte uh, in tech we got dell google microsoft. amazon microsoft so it's been a it's been tough it's been a struggle but it's it's not something which is not achievable at least given the current circumstances and i think one thing i want to add here is um 
yeah, the, the definition of a dream company is constantly evolving. So I yeah. know a lot mm-hmm. of people who've come into Fuqua, they were like, hey, I want to do consulting. I want to work for MBBs or Deloitte or PwC. And then they come in and they go through the process. They they learn more about consulting as an industry and they immediately wanted to switch over to a tech firm. So I think that keeps changing as well. Yeah. And most of the big firms, if not all, I think sponsor international. So I don't think that's that's a really big issue. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, do you guys want to talk about MSTEM as well? Before yeah. Oh yeah, that's a big. There one. are questions about. It'd be great if you can talk about MSTEM at Fuqua and the career prospects. And there was one more. How does one get the MSTEM track? Is it a bidding system? So it's not a bidding system. Uh, it's like a concentration uh, or certification that you apply. So at Fuqua, you can apply for two concentration or one concentration, one certification. Mm-hmm. So MSTEM is just one certification. You have to meet certain requirements. Uh, you are supposed to do eight courses. You can get the details on the website. Uh, if you have done those courses and met those requirements, you get that MSTEM certification. With MSTEM, you get like three-year OPT extension. So that's a great benefit. Like if you don't get selected in your first or second round of H1B lottery, you can still stay here for three years on that. So, but the caveat is like, you have to make sure that your company uh, job description matches with the STEM requirement. Mm -hmm. If that's not there, even though you have STEM certification, it will not be valid. So that's... But I think it's it's huge because there are firms that generally don't hire internationals all across the United States who are only hiring at uh, Fuqua. So like PwC mm-hmm. would generally not hire internationals because of this MSTEM certification, which I think Fuqua is one of the only and few schools, schools yeah. uh, who has this certified with the USCIS. PwC agreed to hire and they had they hired, I think they had two or three internationals went to PwC mm-hmm. overall. So that, I think that it's, it's a huge deal for like some of the firms who yeah. are not hiring before yeah even for some of the startups which do yeah. not hire internationals if you tell them you have stem certi- uh, stem certification they are willing to look in uh, look at you and uh, explore that option with you yep cool can you also talk about how you all leverage the career services center during your first year uh yeah um, so CMC has uh, a defined CMC is career management career, career management, career management yeah. center sorry not an acronym <laughs> not yeah. not <laughs> get used to them <laughs> later on um, yeah so they have a defined uh, curriculum for us like uh, they prepare us how to reach out to Fuqua alumni or any other alumni how to send them email uh, even on resumes how to create your lamp list lamp list is a list of uh, where you list down the companies you are interested into and want to apply. So how to create that, how to prioritize that. They also teach you how to make your cover letter and resumes. Uh, Not only that, but also prepare you for mock interviews. Um, So every first year get a career fellow and those career fellow are your like go-to buddy for all your career related issues. And they'll help you build the one who will check your resumes, who will review your cover letter, who will do mock interviews with you and can also help you with any uh, other resources that you might need. Uh, So that's in there. Apart from that, uh, we have CMC directors sitting in the office and you can go and talk to them uh, as and when you need uh, Mm -hmm. the view. Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify, by career fellow, like Fuqua is a student led um, like school so career fellow is usually a second year student who is paired with a first year student so yeah. you have career fellow as one resource to go to who will be matched relating to the industry which you want to work in yeah then you also have like with indus you have an indus buddy which also is kind of your indus career buddy mm-hmm. who you can reach out to for different types of uh like any queries doubts or again reviews that you want to do about your documents I just want to talk a little bit more about the CMC. So the CMC is divided into various sectors by each industry. So you have finance, you have tech, you have consulting, and then you have directors sitting in each one of them and a lot of like CMC folks who who are there to help you out on call. You can just walk in, you have walk-in hours. Uh, Second thing is how CMC works is they have these, uh, everything that Aditi mentioned, and so they keep you on a tight schedule just to make sure that you're you're able to catch up with all the deadlines, the recruiting deadlines that are there. But then CMC also works with the various clubs at Fuqua, like the tech club, the consulting club, and which is which happens every Wednesday, which is a holiday here, but the most busy day. Yeah. And um, 
there they take you through literally how to start a case, how to prepare for behaviorals, how to go about choosing your location and all that stuff. So CMC, I think, plays a vital role and is li was literally like my walking stick through yeah. this recruiting mm -hmm. process last year. I utilize yeah. CMC a lot for, they have these uh, practice the interview sessions. Yes. Yes. Yep. I utilize them in the second year uh, for the second year recruiting. And that was really helpful. So they have like a small group session with one CMC person where they ask you interview questions and each one of them, each one of the like say students in the room, they go on answering the questions and you get individual feedback, not just from the CMC people, but also from the students in the room. So that was a really good uh, experience for me and had yeah. a really steep learning curve in my interview preparation. Yeah. Other than that, as I think Abhijit mentioned, CMC people are always available. For your first go-to resource would be the second year students, but yeah. if you're still not happy with that, CMC personnel are always there. You can always reach out to them. They're walk-in hours or yeah. appointment with appointments. So how does one get into a leadership role in one of the clubs, including Indus? All right. Ayush, why don't you sure. take this one? Being the <laughs> co-president of our Indus club. Um so one, I would there's no like secret formula. There's just being <laughs> being involved and uh being as involved as you would want to. Um, I would say uh, something that's different from like um, um, being at business school versus, you know, uh, some prior academic experiences is do, do what you really, that you know, something that you're really passionate about and what you love. Uh, you only have two years and it flies by really fast. Um, and um, you want to make the most of it. So something that can, um, where you can learn the most or where you can um, sort of derive the most value as well as give some value is mm -hmm. where um, you would want to invest your time. Um, leadership, like, I think it comes automatically. Like, um, all of us were, were involved, um, you know, with Indus and other other clubs and activities in our first year. And, um, like, leadership opportunities just come up if you're involved and show that enthusiasm. And to be more specific on this, I think, uh, so what happened with, in, with Indus or with any of the clubs is uh, in in February or March of your first year, you would submit your applications for being, well, for that leadership or being the co-president of that club. And then whoever is a member of that club will actually vote for the various mm -hmm. applications that come in. And whoever gets the maximum vote will actually end up becoming the co-president. Like that's how we became co-presidents of Indus Club. And then after that, it's upon us to select our cabinet. So we sent out applications, application forms for people who are interested in joining the Indus cabinet. And we had interviews with our first year batch mates and then selected our entire cabinet accordingly. So this is pretty much what the process, uh, which is followed across all the clubs at, at Trupa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically in first year, uh, if you every club will be releasing their application forms. So if you are interested in particular club, be on lookout for that. Uh, just fill that form and uh, then you'll interview with them and then you'll get selected. Yeah, and to um, be fair, it's not like a process where it, you just like you're filling in these applications for the first time, you've already had a lot of interaction with that club before, like you would have volunteered on certain initiatives yeah. with the yeah. second years at that time who know you by now. And so it's it's all about showing that interest from the beginning, I think uh, is important. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what courses, clubs, plus hands-on experience one can leverage to move to consulting from operations and supply chain background. So I think let's talk about moving into consulting from a non-consulting background, not just keep it restricted to operations and supply chain. Yeah. Okay. So consulting folks. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I think the, the first thing is just uh, going to all these recruiting events that, so there are tons of consulting uh, companies that come on campus. So just attending their sessions, getting to learn more about the kind of work they do. A lot of them are driven by industry specializations from the beginning, and some of them follow a generalist role. So you need to uh, realize or understand what suits you better, or if there's an industry that you are already interested in and you know you want to specialize, versus uh, someone who wants to try out different industries before specializing in one. So I think that's one. And two, once you've identified that this is the right industry for you, you go through the CMC, the resources that we talked about, the CMC, your career fellow, uh, the consulting club, who literally walk you through each uh, step in the process by like, all right, your resumes are due now, get your resumes reviewed by your second years or the CMC folks 
uh, the cover letters are due, the the informationals, how to conduct them with the various practitioners in these consulting companies. Casing so I, roadmap. Is yeah, the casing, the casing roadmap is a big one, I think. Thanks, Ketar. Yeah, in the consulting club where they literally take you in through this one and a half month journey of how to actually go through a case and um, what best resources that you can use to um, kind of hone your casing skills for the for the final D-Day uh, during the interviews. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think uh, you have enough resources, but it's just about identifying whether it's the right industry for you or not. Yeah, and I think that is the question that you want to answer for yourself. Yeah. Either you can do that while, after you're here, or you can even do that before. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't think there's like a huge, there's, I don't think you need to do anything else before you come to Fuqua to actually pursue those tracks. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would, I think we would probably recommend not to. Um, like enjoy your time if you've already, you know, been admitted or if you're considering Fuqua, um, like, you know, put in your best applications and then when you get here, things, you can trust the process mm-hmm. and then and then just follow that. Um, and you don't need to worry about like too much about your background if you want to get into consulting. Yeah. I believe consulting yeah. firms are probably more, even more than welcome. Um, you know, they more than welcome people from diverse backgrounds. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, I as agree. opposed to people who mm-hmm. already see in this area. Yep. There are some admitted students um, over here as well. So how how would you recommend spending the next few months in order to be ready for the MBA program and the internship? So first of all, a big congratulations <laughs> from all of us. Uh, yes. Welcome to Team Fuqua. And um, over the next few months, I think it's just making sure you're tracking the to-do lists that Fuqua yes. keeps sending you, and they will. They will make sure that you you know that these are the things that you need to check off your list. But apart from that, as Ayush mentioned earlier, just like spend this time with your friends and family, enjoy, take, take a break, and bring your best self to Fuqua once you come in here like next year i would say watch a lot of netflix shows because, <laughs> no honestly yeah. like people everyone even in recruiting sessions people talk about netflix shows a lot like people talk about game of thrones Chern- chernobyl and yeah. stranger things and whatnot so be be on top of all of that because it really helps you in joining in that conversation and contributing <laughs> something meaningful i know it sounds stupid but it is true it's that's what i experienced mm-hmm. at least yeah. um basically just chill because first year is gonna be so hectic yeah. like yeah if you exhaust yourself before coming to Fuqua I don't think so you'll be able to survive so just enjoy and then put your best shoes when you are at Fuqua yeah I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be that bad guy and actually tell you stuff that you can do um not like you don't need to uh, you know go around and reaching out to people you know you don't need to reach out to companies or people please actually don't do that um that actually might go against you um, I would say two things that you can do is, is just read about read about the culture here. Um, read about you know like sports mm-hmm. or like, you know what's what's going on in the news. Um, just so you're more up to date and of, of of the environment and the culture, not only professionally but personally. Um, you know like if you're interested in a sport um, or you're interested in traveling the U.S. Um, you know you might want to read about that so you can talk to it um, as well when you come when you come over here. Um, second is. Um, um, as Abhijit mentioned, like just 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 do some soul searching. Um, yeah. Take take some time to to really get to know yourself. Um. Now now that you've been admitted to Fuqua, you already have you know a, a lot of uh, good things working for you. Mm-hmm. So you can really take this time to really get to know yourself and spend time um you know thinking about what you really want to do. I think uh, what a lot of people don't realize is the recruiting process over here is very different. In the US, is yeah. very different yeah. from yeah. what it is in India. Right. It's not just on your resume. So you have a lot of networking sessions with, if you want to say work with BCG. BCG is here, I think, almost every other week. I mean, we have yeah. we have a dedicated person from BCG who sits who on actually, campus yeah, here. Who sits on campus. They have a lot of like dinners and networking sessions where you're expected to talk and contribute about, not about consulting, but about general stuff. Yeah. And that's where your knowledge about Fuqua or about the culture around Fuqua or about like Game of Thrones or the Netflix shows <laughs> or even just reading about the Wall Street Journal and knowing what's happening in the U.S., uh, that really helps and like helps you stand out in in front of the others where you look like an informed person contributing to a to a conversation yeah and to kedar's point about the differences between recruiting here like especially if you're doing consulting and i'm i'm talking through my experience here firms over index more on your networking skills than your gpa or what's on your resume of, yeah. of course that's important but like i've felt 
that networking and how you talk to these practitioners and the first impression that you make on them is more important than the other stuff, mm-hmm. which is paid more attention to when you're in India yeah. recruiting for firms. Cool. Yeah, another, just one last point on that um, would be, like I came here and I found out that a, a big part of interviewing is is behavioral questions. And sometimes it just it just got hard for me to to recall um, everything that I did in my previous jobs. Um, if you guys have time, you might want to note down some um, like some initiatives or projects that you're uh, or some of the details of the projects mm-hmm. that you're doing right now or you have done in the past. Don't overdwell on them, but um, if you just have them noted down, you bring them to Fuqua. They will definitely help you um, when you're talking to you know your pre- your prior experience during your interviews. Um, what plan of action would you recommend to convert a waitlist to an interview decision? Uh, uh, so was... I was on waitlist, but I was waitlisted after my interview. Um, but I could tell what are the things that I did. Uh, so I tried to look into my application and try and figure out what could be the weakest point uh, why I didn't make it. So for me, weakest point was my GMAT. So I tried and give the GMAT again and wrote to the admissions and gave them an update and reiterated how and why I am interested. Also, uh, I developed a very good relationship with my interviewer, so I was in constant touch with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually wrote a recommendation to the school on my behalf, seeing my progress and my interview experience with him. So I don't know what worked for Mm -hmm. me, but I would say just look into your application and try and understand what you think is the weakest link and try and work on that and then send out an update to Fuqua and also uh, let them know like why you are still interested and what is that keeps you motivated to apply to Fuqua and wait for your wait list to be converted. Also, if you are in US anytime, doesn't hurt to visit Fuqua yeah. and meet the admissions committee. I know it's, it's uh, easier said than done, but... Um, think about it at that as well no i think one of uh, my the partners of one of my c lead members was waitlisted and i think what helped her was she was based in the us so obviously it was easier but she she would visit fuqua a lot especially during these diversity events uh, that kept happening here and just meeting with the admissions team reiterating how much she wanted to be at fuqua and come here so i think that that mm-hmm. worked in her favor and she did uh, join in the class of 2021 cool so one question about Durham, Durham being away from a major city like Chicago or NYC, are there any, is there any advantage or disadvantage associated with that fact with respect to networking events? I think with networking events, uh, I'll just speak for consulting. You guys can speak to uh, tech and Kedar can even talk about IB. So with consulting, I don't think there's any uh, disadvantage of being in Durham because Fuqua being like, one of the top schools here, the, most of the firms come here on campus and you uh, they have at least, what, eight to 10 different practitioners. They have events, they have happy hours where you can network with the folks and get to know more about the culture of the firm. Uh, we also do something called weekend cities, which is basically during the fall one uh, break, uh, first year students go visit the city of their choice where they see themselves working in the future and visiting again all these consulting firms uh, in their offices and again networking, building more points of contacts there. Uh, So I don't think there's a disadvantage to being in Durham um, from a consulting standpoint. Yeah, same for tech as well. Like all the big tech companies come down on campus, do their presentation, uh, hold their uh, office hour where you can meet with them like one-on-one or one-on-two. And just like consulting, we also have weekend cities for tech companies where you go to Bay Area and Seattle and spend time with different companies uh, over there. So I don't see any sort of uh, disadvantage in that respect. And plus, like tech companies are not so big on networking as much as consulting. Mm -hmm. And about IB, uh, to be brutally honest, I would say, yes, there is a disadvantage because Investment banking is, everything is in New York and they expect you to travel to New York to build up a rapport with them. So you're expected to travel to New York at least three, two or three times in sometimes in November, which is, uh, which is very costly and it is very stressful. 
because you have to plan your trip in such a way that you talk to three, four people and then sometimes people do not respond and then it happened with me that I planned a trip to New York and just ended up meeting one person in that day and I had to spend $400 round trip flight costs just to meet that one person. So from IB perspective, I think location is a disadvantage. Um, but I think that would be the case for any, I'm, I'm not sure, but would that be the case for any school that's not in New York? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I would say um, more than location, it's more of um, companies, a lot of big companies have their target schools. Mm -hmm. um, you can get more information about that from like the employment reports, but um, it's, I don't think the location per se is, yeah. is ever a problem, right? Um, even like, if you look at, um, th there would be, if, if a company doesn't want to come down, say, you know, from a far off office down to campus, they can always recruit like offline as well, like um, over, you know, virtual, virtual interviews and virtual sessions as well. Um, all of that is very, very, I would say developed in the US as opposed to like, or compared to India where a company would only come on campus to hire in, in engineering schools. Mm -hmm. um, like it did happen, you know, I was in, in a remote location in Bilani, in Rajasthan, in India, and uh, there were companies who, you know, wouldn't come all the way, you know, from to, an, uh, to a remote location. It doesn't work like that in the US. Um, cities are like relatively well connected to technology or just through, uh, you know, through transportation means. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Durham actually is, 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 is pretty well connected, um, you know, given this entire uh, research triangle park area that yeah. we're in. Um, there's a very high... Um, you know, um, a sort of a, um, attraction rate of companies in this area, um, um, along with companies that are looking to, you know, open open up new offices in this in this Raleigh Durham area. Yep. Also, I think tech is one industry which doesn't require networking. It requires like very minimal amount of networking, yeah. which can be done over over phone calls. So, yeah. for tech, definitely, and even for consulting, I think definitely yeah. location is not nope. not a problem. Uh, so should we go ahead with applying in round two or three or wait for an year and target round one? It depends, I guess, like any uh, answer. Uh, I think it depends on your application, how good you're feeling about your application at the time. Uh, if you really think that you have checked off all the boxes um, and you, are, you have uh, credentials to show for why uh, you deserve to be here, I think it's it's okay to apply in round two and three, but given this, just know, you also have to be smart about it. You know the stats, the, uh, how many students get in through round one versus yeah. two versus three. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, it's it's all it's all about how you feel. So it's about you. You would rather submit your best application next year if that's if that's better versus now. Or but if you do feel that this is the best that you can do in terms of your application, go ahead and like submit now. Yeah. I think you uh, as an international, we cannot apply in round three because of visa. Oh, but okay. I'm not sure. But I think round two is uh, our last round. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure um, like um, uh, the admissions team here um, at Fuca might be able to add Answer. more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, add, uh, you know, provide more value there. Um, we can share our personal experience. Yeah. For an international student, would you recommend submitting an application with a pragmatic short-term goal like consulting or tech versus something niche like luxury retail? It's interesting. <laughs> uh, I would say your short-term goal in your essays has to be something specific. It doesn't have to be something niche. But if you just say that you want to work in consulting, I mean, that's like 90% of the Indian engineer crowd which want, who want to come to <laughs> come to US. So it has to be something, if, if you say consulting, I think it has to be something very specific in consulting as well. If you want to really, you, are need, you need to really think about it, like what you want to do, uh, which industry you want to target or... Uh, oh yeah, or, or how it ties back to your long-term goal. How like it, how yeah. will this short-term goal lead you to achieving your long-term goal, yeah. uh, I think. Yeah, I guess you have to think about your storyline also. Yes. Like, from where you're working, why you want to move to this next and how this will help you to move to your uh, long-term goals. So think about that storyline and then like put that uh, and into the application. Actually think about like what you really want and put that into the application, I would say. Yeah, I, I agree with Aditi. Um, I would say just like really follow your heart um, and plans change, right? And the admissions committee knows that, you know that, everybody knows that the plans can change. Uh, they probably will change, um, you know, once you're once you're here at Fuqua. Um, but just for the application, I think the, I I truly believe that the best application comes 
comes forth when you are your true self. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not about putting something which is pragmatic and does not align with who you are. Um, being yourself is an important part of, um, of, of getting in because that's not the, de like getting in is not a destination, right? Um, actually what you want to do and having those goals being fulfilled and you seeing yourself, you know, in those, in those shoes after a few years is the ultimate goal. So, so keep that in mind. I think it also shows in your, in the interview, if you're like, if you're not yeah. passionate about, yeah. or if you've just written a story just to try and get your foot in the door through this, in the school, I think it shows in the interviews if you're not being genuine. So I think stick to your story. You know your you know your stuff. You research this stuff a lot, like where you actually want to be. Just try to tie back your short term goal and to your long term goal in terms of how you're going to achieve that or how this is going to pave the path for that. Yeah, just a related question to that is how do you show that? Like, how do you stand out in your applications? These are all tough questions. <laughs> I, would, I, I have an answer for that actually. Okay. Uh, the way to stand out in your applications is do a lot of research. Talk to people who are currently in Fuqua, who graduated out of Fuqua recently. Learn about Fuqua, learn about what exactly happens in the school. And that is what will help you differentiate your application mm -hmm. and like not make it a very generic application. Like, hey, I want to be a part of the consulting club. I want to be a part of the tech club. Like everybody knows that, but you need to yeah. dive deeper and give out specifics that what you want to do at Fuqua. I think there's an essay which we had at least, like how do you want to spend your time at Fuqua? Mm -hmm. And giving out those specifics, learning more about the school will actually help you stand out and differentiate. Yeah, I think I can confidently speak for everyone here that like we knew the Fuqua website inside out uh, by the time we were done with the mm -hmm. applications because we had just researched about everything that goes on at Fuqua, which also shows that you're interested and you really want to go here. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. And also everyone has their own story to share. So that itself makes it different and stand yes. out. So focus on like, what's your story? What you want to achieve out of it? Do GRE applicants face any disadvantage with these GMAT? Also, are GMAT scores needed for consulting interviews? I'm not sure about GRE. Yeah, even I'm not, maybe you can like, uh, reach out to the admissions uh, for better guidance on this. But for consulting, I can take the second one. Uh, they do ask you for your GMAT scores uh, in the application process, but I don't think it matters a lot. Um, but having said that, you obviously want to maintain a respectable GMAT score. But I think what they pay more attention to is your overall personality, how you bring yourself uh, to the table your uh, networking skills, your resume, what you did before this. I think GMAT is just one small component in the application process for consulting. I would say it doesn't really matter because um, for McKinsey, like they just ask it in the application, but then I don't think so they ever looked at it because my GMAT was not that great mm -hmm. uh, as compared to other Indian, Indian students. I'm just comparing to Indian students. so. I don't think so. They looked at it, but looking back, is there one thing you wish you knew or would have done when starting at Fuqua? Taken a longer vacation. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I would have lost a lot of weight before coming to Fuqua because you will end up putting on a lot of weight in your first year yeah. because the amount of junk you end up eating over here. Um, but on a serious note, yeah, what I would say two things one um i slightly i touched upon slightly uh in, in one of the previous questions um is that like just noting down stories i i i tended to forget a lot of you know a lot of some of the nice projects that i did i think i realized like later on in my first year I'm like oh i also did, did you know i also did yeah. this initiative at work i'm like that should that would have been a great story for this interview mm -hmm. so just noting those down um it might you know don't again don't overstress on it but uh, you know, having those, uh, you know, bullet points jotted down maybe would have helped more. Um, second would, um, second would be, so here, everyone is competitive, everyone is super smart, um, and sometimes it gets tough to break out of the, the MBA bubble or the Fuqua bubble, um, you know, just from a, uh, from a career standpoint or, you know, from, from, from what you really want to do. So I would say, um, you know, I, we really mean it when, when, when we say take some time off to really get to know yourself and what you want to do, because once you get here, um, it's going to be, there's no looking back. 
And if you don't have a plan, you're just going to be a follower, um, be it recruiting, be mm-hmm. it, you know, be other stuff, um, as opposed to doing something that will truly give you happiness in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add to that. Yeah. Well, very well said. Yeah. I think, do we need permission from Fuqua to get involved in other clubs, like the art clubs that is outside of Fuqua? Think so, yeah. No, I don't think you need uh, permission uh, to be involved in any club. So I think Fuqua is just uh, like Ayush mentioned earlier too. Fuqua is a student-run uh, school. You can be a part of as many clubs as you want. There is no max cap there, uh, whether it's with Fuqua or whether it's with the bigger Duke community. So I don't think there's any, uh, you need any additional or outside permission for that. Yeah, and joining a club is as easy as like clicking yeah, a button. Just clicking a button, click yeah. a button. That's, that's it, that's it. Nothing. Club, yeah. And unlike uh, many schools, Fuqua doesn't ask for membership fee to join a club. <laughs> yes. That's a big point, so that's yeah. oh, like that's you can ask That's a good point. Yeah, yes. a lot of schools. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't uh-huh. know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could you talk about your interaction with professors? Do you interact with them even outside their academic responsibilities? Yeah, I, I did all the time. And professors actually take a lot of pride um, in that, um, they actually like one of our professors actually sent out an email asking you know us to reach out or just to talk over coffee about anything going on in their life, mm-hmm. um, and that's something that they really enjoy. Um, again, you know, uh, tying it back to my undergrad experience, it's very different here. Your professors are like incredibly well connected, oh, yeah. awesome people, and just great human beings to talk to outside of the academic setting as well. Yeah. And it's bound to happen that like in one of your classes or courses, there's a certain l- topic that the professor is talking about that strikes a chord with you b- based on your past experience or something personal that's happened with you. You can just walk up to him during the break or even after hours and talk to him about his research on that. And they're more than happy. I think they, in fact, they enjoy yeah. speaking yeah. to students and like getting their perspectives on it, um, yeah. on those topics. So yeah, I think it's it's very, very different from the academic setting in India. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's take maybe one more question because I think we're... Yeah, so uh, there are some specific questions about admissions and scholarships. Uh, we would advise you to reach out to Morgan for that because we would not be the best people to comment on scholarships yeah. or even some specific admission questions which are over here. Last question is, is learning a foreign language like Spanish advantages at Fuqua and beyond? I mean, I, I don't know if I want to look at it from that perspective. Yeah. I think that's just, do you want to learn Spanish? Yeah. I think is your is the first question. Yeah. Don't l- look at it from, is it going to be advantageous at Fuqua? Uh, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Learning yeah. English is very advantageous yes. <laughs> in US. But uh, yeah, I mean, the more languages you know, it's probably good. Yeah. Personally, I'm, I'm not sure if like, that's... We haven't faced any disadvantage yeah. of not knowing, knowing Spanish. Knowing Spanish or French, yeah. 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 All right, and any last, okay, what nonprofit activities, opportunities are organized in a team setting? There's Fuqua on board. There's Fuqua on board. We even had the whole uh, community building thing. Durham yeah. Habitat. Durham Habitat, Habitat for Durham uh, with our sea lead. Rise which Against was, Hunger. Rise Against Hunger. Uh, so there are opportunities, like a few opportunities which are hosted by, Fu- organized by Fuqua. And if you want to get more involved in those opportunities, it's up to you. Like I know a, classmate of mine who used to volunteer at Durham Habitat he did that for the entire year last year Mm -hmm. and uh, that's because he wanted to contribute to the community Uh, but I think also we have impact investing club which Mm. uh, collaborate with a lot of these uh, non-profit things and work with them Uh, a couple of our friends are also doing that so that's a great area and Fuqua is also known for its impact investing so something to check out uh, sorry we are not so involved in that club mm-hmm. and and broadly like as we said fuqua is big on community um it could be community of students at fuqua at duke in durham all of that um there's plenty of stuff to do um you know from a non-profit mm-hmm. standpoint here professionally and personally um and overall even if you want to start something new that's also super easy at fuqua um you know if there's any initiative or idea that you want to bring onto the table um that would be more than appreciated Right. I think so. We'll wrap thing up. Uh, wrap things up here. I think first of all, again, a big congratulations to all the folks who've been admitted. Welcome to Team Fuqua. All the perspectives. Uh, we hope you're gonna uh, send in your applications, your best applications, and we wish you all the best with the application process. 
And just overall, I think I hope we've been able to answer most of your questions and just give you a flavor of what being at Fuqua is like. Um, and yeah. I think yeah, one for prospective applicants, one important thing is just reach out to people on LinkedIn. You can just search by Duke University and see the Indian students. If you want to talk to people from Indus, people are always happy to yeah. happy to help out. So keep reaching out and keep doing your research. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.